tales from the uh, the high seas. Did you have one for this episode, Alan? Yeah, there's one I was thinking of the other day because it's a that's a story that I kind of forgotten about because I wasn't going to tell anybody. Because <laughs> well, I couldn't tell anyone at the time, so it's a story that you need so to. So this is an exclusive. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's one of these stories you've got to tell backwards. It was after the first time I did a proper deep submersible dive in Java Trench. There's a whole bunch of photographs of me stood in the deck of the boat, standing at a bit, of, a bit of a funny angle. It looks like I've got a bad back, right? I've kind of stood there going, ooh. And it's weird now, you look through the photographs and, it, and no one's ever commented, it's like, why, why is Al standing in such a weird position? He's a really weird stance. You'd been stuffed into a titanium ball for 12 hours. We assumed you'd just yeah. taken on the shape of the ball. Well, everyone just assumes that because... It, and it, there is an element of that, that when you sit in a little ball for 12 hours, it, you, you, your back does tend to seize up because you can't move your legs. It is quite uncomfortable. But that's not quite the reason why uh, I was doing it at such a jaunty angle. But that, that, that sub-dive was one where the hatch was leaking until about 5,500 metres deep. It was one we accidentally drove the sub underneath a, an overhang at 7,200 metres and... It was just an amazing dive, but I, I knew it was going to be brilliant, so I, I wasn't going to tell anyone what had happened in case they pulled me from the dive. So the only person who knows to some degree what was going on was, was a captain, who shall remain nameless. So I asked him for some painkillers that morning, and I took quite a lot of painkillers that morning, because there was something wrong with me, and it wasn't just, it wasn't just my bad back. About a week before we flew to Bali to do that, I was on the living room floor just mucking around with the boys. Uh, that's my children, that is, not the lads. But at one point I was on the floor and all three of them were piling on my back and I, I sort of lifted myself up and I felt something snap in my ribcage. I thought, oh, dude, you're kidding. And just before I flew out to join the ship in Bali, uh, I thought I was long overdue a night out with my mate Dave. And everyone's got a mate Dave. So I went out in Edinburgh. But at some point in that night, Dave actually punched me straight in the rib that had cracked due to the, the rumbling and tumbling of, of children a week beforehand. So loved ones had assaulted you on two separate occasions. Yeah, well, kids had started something and then Dave had just obliterated something in my ribcage and it was absolutely killing me. So the morning of the dive, I thought, this, you know, this is going to be my first hail dive ever. This will be the first time a British person has been in the hail zone. No one's taking this away from me. So I took a whole bunch of painkillers. Because by the end of the dive, the painkillers have long worn off and I'm trying to climb up through the, the trunking of the sub and everything else and the ribs are clicking away. <laughs> <laughs> just rattling loose in there. And there's these weird photographs of me stood on the top of the sub like, hi everybody, hi. I never told anyone that because they'd probably think I was a bit reckless and I shouldn't have done it. One of these big moments in Hadle exploration and it was nearly ruined by a punch from my mate Dave. 